Ever since I was a teenager and I saw the film That Thing You Do, I've been a huge fan of the style and design of Dan Electro guitars and basses, especially the DC-59s. So when I was asked to do this video, I was super excited. However, I wasn't entirely sure how they would sound or feel. Well, it turns out they are awesome. Dan Electro was founded by Nat Daniels in the late 1940s, early 1950s. He was working for Epiphone building amplifiers when he was approached by Sears, the big megastore, who wanted him to make amps and then later guitars for them. And so he did, and for the next 10 years, they both had lots of lovely success until the late 60s when Nat Daniels decided to sell it to MCA Universal for six million. Now after one year trading like this, Sears decided to cut ties with MCA Universal and get the guitars from somebody else, which left MCA Universal in a very difficult situation and had no choice but to close the factory down. Dan Electro would then remain closed and out of business for almost 40 years. That was until 1997 when Steve Ridinger brought Dan Electro back. Now he is the man responsible for the Fox Tone Machine, he brought one of the first electric guitar tuners to the market, and he's been responsible for a whole bunch of other guitar pedals as well. His plan initially was just to bring back guitar pedals, but after introducing them uh, at NAMM in 1997, everyone was like, but what about the guitars? So a year later in 1998, he brought back Dan Electro guitars. Since then, Dan Electro have gone from strength to strength, finding their way into the hands of many famous musicians and artists. They are in loads of films purely because of their vintage retro aesthetics. And more recently, one of them found its way onto the stage of SNL Live with Phoebe Bridges and had a bit of an unhappy ending. In a nutshell, the guitar body shapes can be broken down into five different body shapes. So we have the 57, we have the 59, which is the one that I always knew about. We have the 64, we have the 66, and we have the 67. What's really cool to see is a lot of these body shapes offer lefty versions for the, for the left-handed people, which is great. Uh, baritone options and also 12 string options. So they're really covering all bases. In terms of the bass guitars, we have the 59, which is the one that I fell in love with as a kid watching that thing you do. And then also the Longhorn, which let's face it, looks like it was drawn by a four-year-old who was just told to draw a guitar. But some people love it. It is, it is one of those Marmite things. And if you love it, fair play. Aside to that, we also have a Resonator, which is uh, based on the 59 body shape. And then also a sitar and a baby sitar, which was a little bit random, but also very, very cool.
In terms of specifications, uh, we have an array of different things from walnut and maple bodywoods to palferro and rosewood fingerboards. Uh, and then picket wise, there are some humbuckers, but mainly it's the single coil, lipstick single coils that Dan Electro are kind of known for. In my opinion, these guitars really surprised me. I mean, I always love the way they look, like I've said that already, but the sound and, and the quality and the feel really surprised me. You know, they're gonna lend themselves to players that are used to like Gretsch's, people that are playing like country-esque kind of stuff. They, that's what they do really, really well. And they will rival any of those guitars easily. At the end of the day, these guitars do what they do and they do it really, really well. Uh, if you've got any kind of preconceived ideas about them, I would urge you to jump down to your local guitar store, come down and see us, and have a play on one. <laughs>